In this series of videos I'm attempting to repair this Electronica D3 Nixie Tube calculator. In the previous videos I've dismantled the unit and in the last video I replaced the capacitors in the power supply, tested that. Uh, that was uh, then working fine, the voltages need adjusting a little bit and then we pulled all the boards, had a look at those, a very brief look at them. and. We had a better quality display, it's not working still and uh, one of the issues uh, I was looking at is how to go about starting to fault find on this. It doesn't work, none of the functions work, uh, none of the keys really have any uh, sensible impact on what it's uh, displaying and uh, removing certain boards you can modify the behaviour but um, nothing is really working the way it should do and the way I decided to start fault finding on this was to try and track down why the last digit wasn't working and as we found with the DTL uh, calculator the way these work if you get a, a basically one of the digits not um, being readable or writable it can stop the machine from running uh, so I decided to look at that first now as you can probably see there's a capacitor tacked on the top there and it turned out that was a fairly simple fix. It was just a shorted cap, one of these big green caps you can see along the top was dead short and what we have now is uh, all the digits working. Some are a bit slow to come up but um, they are all working. This is partly due to some of these caps being leaky so I may well replace all of them. If one's failed chances are the rest are going to fail soon anyway. Unfortunately I don't have any look the same. I do have some vintage type ceramic caps so I'm probably going to put those in there. Uh, it will look alright, it won't look quite uh, the same but um, it will operate uh, more uh, reliably. So that resolved that issue unfortunately because it means that it wasn't an issue with the logic. So the next step was where to go from there. So as I showed in the previous video certain functions do do things but they're not doing what they're supposed to. Uh, so as uh, I've mentioned previously let's turn this off. So as I've mentioned previously I have a fairly consistent way in uh, which I approach this type of repair. So I didn't have any schematics for this, didn't have any technical documentation and um, I pointed out that the ICs on this machine are uh, they're not TTL, they are a kind of MOS um, intermediate uh, design, so intermediate between the DTL discrete design and TTL and I said that it, uh, they normally run on uh, a minus 27 volt supply and uh, somebody asked why it was such an, an odd supply voltage. So. Before we go any further, just a very brief um, outline as to why the voltage is uh, kind of seemingly strange on a machine like this. And the ICs used in this uh, are again mostly Russian uh, design and you can still find uh, data sheets online for some of the components. I'll come back to this in more detail in a few minutes. But if we look at one of the schematics for um, one of the devices, we'll see it looks like this. And so what we have is, as I said, these are MOS uh, devices. And if you're familiar with uh, uh, FETs of this era, then you'll know that in order to control them, you have to apply a voltage to the gate that's quite a long way outside of the source and drain voltages. So each time you add a layer, so if you imagine this is a single device, single layer, you need to be able to apply a voltage significantly outside of this range. And then as you start to build up what is effectively a totem pole design, uh, you just multiply uh, the, uh, the required voltage range over which the device uh, will be operated. And so you tend to end up with needing quite a high supply voltage. And um, that's why it runs on uh, minus 27 volts. However, you're not going to get a 27 volt voltage swing. So if you've got a, a 
uh, a standard um, supply of, of 27 volts or minus 27 volts so you'll have 0 volts and you'll have your minus 27 volt supply rail uh, but the switching voltages on the output of these so these points uh, it will not be plus it will be from 0 to minus 27 volts typically they are the high level or low level depending on how you look at it will be somewhere between 0 and minus 2 volts and the high or low voltage uh, output will be around minus 7.5 volts so if you switch these you'll be switching somewhere in this range so if that's what you're seeing when you're scoping these then don't be surprised that's the normal operation it's not going to switch down to minus 27 volts so I started looking into this in a bit more uh, detail and trying to figure out what each of the boards was doing. I'd repaired the digits, it was then working, but the machine, as you can see, still isn't working. But one of the problems in trying to uh, work on a machine like this where you don't have any technical documentation is it's not impossible, but it's very difficult because trying to dig out the data sheets for something like this is it's extremely difficult for a number of reasons Now, one of the things I actually like about um, Russian IC markings is that the numbers um, actually mean something you can decode them and it will tell you uh, effectively what each device is so for example one of the devices is a K1TP721 and the TP means it's an RS flip-flop and this is the schematic for that particular device but trying to dig these up is difficult and um, you, I couldn't really find um, data sheets for all of these I've worked on these before and so I had a few of these already but um, mostly I can't find data sheets for the devices now in response to the previous video somebody was kind enough to send me a link to a data book has the data sheets for pretty much all these devices and all the devices in this range so um, thanks for that that is going to be really useful it's in Russian as you can see but the uh, the data and the schematic is the bit that I want and that's extremely useful and it's uh, useful for several reasons one is because you of course get access to the data that you need but also the markings, while they are fairly informative, it's very easy to mix them up. So these two numbers, these numbers look to be very similar, um, but they're completely different devices. So this one and this one, which are obviously um, one after the other in the data book, this is from a data book rather than a separate uh, data sheet. And while they look like a very similar number, and on the actual ICs themselves, especially when it's conformally coated, it makes it quite hard to read. It's very easy to mix them up. So you've got to be very careful to make sure you're looking at the number very carefully, because they are completely different devices. What makes it more confusing is that sometimes the output pin uh, might be on the same pin. So if you're just looking for outputs, it might again mislead you. You can see that pin 10 on both of these is an output but the actual device is completely different so make sure that you've got the right one so thanks again for the link to the um, data book that's going to be extremely useful and um, it will make this repair a lot easier so I'd started going through trying to figure out what each board was and I started at the keyboard and I got as far as this so this took me about two hours using a combination of the scope and the multimeter and what I was doing because as I said with the um, the DTL calculator the the blocks of um, I won't call them uh, fixed blocks of schematic or circuitry because it does vary from machine to machine but the functional blocks within something like this all tend to be fairly uh, fixed um, another question came up, or is a comment, that's saying that uh, there seems to be a lot more circuitry in this considering it uses ICs than was in the DTL. And one of the reasons for that is, although I didn't really make much of it at the time, is this. It's got a minus indicator. 
So this calculator will handle negative numbers. The Toshiba won't. And if you've ever written any code or firmware embedded systems where you're handling numbers, um, especially if you're using assembly code, you'll know that when you start getting into floating point and negative numbers, um, it makes a massive difference to just uh, positive integers. So that's one of the reasons this has a lot more code is it handles positive and negative numbers. Um, but I got as far as figuring out what some of the boards did. So board one, the number from the front, and uh, board one is the keyboard latch and decoder. And I figured that out because uh, the inputs to it come straight from the keyboard and the device is on there. This is why I have these two sheets printed off. Uh, were uh, RS latches and the outputs of those were going out of the board and going through to a, another board. Um, board 3 has got a clock on it, very obvious looking at it because it's one of the only boards or the few boards that has some capacitors on it so it's fairly obviously a clock and putting the scope on there. It's a, about a 30 kilohertz clock and looking through that again we had uh, two um, counters. One's a one of 15 counter and one's a 6-bit binary counter. So I'm assuming that the first was the display multiplexer and sure enough when I traced it through those lines went through to the display digit drivers. And then the 6-bit uh, binary counter I'm assuming is the address counter for the data. And then three of the cards, two, four, and five, seem to be uh, kind of inter. There's quite a lot of um, connections between them, so I think they're part of the state machine control. Uh, card six is, of course, the um, display driver and multiplexer, so that's the one with the Nixie tube attached. Uh, seven is a functional control, which I believe because it's connected from the keyboard function keys, so the uh, things like plus, minus, multiply, divide, those lines go through to card 7, so I think that's the one that's going to be handling the uh, function control, it's kind of latching in the functions. Um, I decided to take a break at that point and look at uh, cards 8 and 9 later, I'm assuming one of these, um, if not both of them, are for data storage and the other one is for the, um, the ALU. Uh, but uh, I said I decided to have a break, so I went and uh, had a cup of tea and uh, looked at my emails. And um, I was surprised to find in my emails somebody had been kind enough to send me the schematics for this machine. And um, I was fairly astounded. It was, I didn't even know this would, would exist anymore. So to find a set of schematics for a machine of this era, um, I was very surprised. So. Uh, Thanks uh, for that, Tony. I really do appreciate it. It's going to make this very much easier. Um, it would be repairable anyway. It would just probably take five times longer without the schematics. Um, but also, well, in theory, at least I hope, make the videos more interesting because I can show um, in a lot more detail what we're looking at. So looking at my list, um, this is why I didn't come back and do um, boards eight and nine. But looking at the list, Sure enough, board one is um, these uh, pins. Again, it, this is in Russian, the text is in Russian. Um, but even so, it, it kind of gives you a fairly good idea as to what we're looking at. So K, A, and then there's a symbol I can't read. The, these came out, they're obviously scans. Originally it looked like this, so they were kind of hard to read. So I processed them and enhanced them a bit and uh, printed them off. So. Uh, they are a bit more readable, but even so, some of the text is fairly hard to see. And um, But what we have is uh, KA1 through 9 and 0. So these are inputs from the keyboard. And I looked at the pins. These are pin designations. So A2 is the front pin 2, the two connectors, front and back. And um, this one, this... Uh, is a basically a B2 is uh, the back of the first connector uh, pin 2 and if you follow those through sure enough it comes to the keys on the keyboard 
and then the output of this we're getting um, what amounts to this is uh, not pin 3 so it doesn't mean it's not related to pin 3 it means it's a negative output signal indicating that character 3 has been pressed so this all started making sense and I think I was correct in my assumption as to what uh, board 1 does and there's a separate schematic for each board and uh, second um, board sure enough appears to be part of the um, the overall control system for the machine next one we have the clock and um, if you're familiar with this construct what really gives this away are these gates here and this is of course a counter so this is a, um, a binary counter and up here it's these are labeled uh, a1 a2 so I'm assuming these are address and so we have an address uh, counter output and then down here we have these outputs labeled T0 they're not in order but the labeled T0 through T, uh, T15 so these are the multiplex lines and these sure enough go through to the multiplex inputs of the display board so again uh, that's correct that's what pin that's what uh, board 3 does and going through the rest um, this is pretty much what I found to be uh, the case so uh, everything um, while it's not simple to decode especially because it's hard to read and in Russian uh, it's still extremely useful having these schematics I just need to figure out uh, exactly what uh, boards 8 and 9 do I haven't really looked at these in much detail yet but um, this should make the overall repair a lot more straightforward we've then got the keyboard layout as well I haven't um, uh, changed the, uh, the formatting of these, I haven't uh, optimised them or, or tried to clean them up, so you might uh, find them a bit difficult to see. Um, but it does tell you what each key does. We've got the power supply schematic. Um, there are some flowcharts as well, um, but unfortunately all the text is in Russian, and I can't read Russian, so unfortunately I think these would be extremely useful if I could read them um, but unfortunately I can't so I'm going to have to uh, just uh, carry on guessing um, and also I believe this is a signal uh, designator chart I think this again it's in Russian so I can't read it but I think this says what each signal actually is uh, but unfortunately again I can't read this and then we have the interconnect information for the backplane Although I can't read this, what I can do is uh, match them up. So um, obviously if we've got uh, an indicator here, it doesn't really matter what it says, but anywhere that appears elsewhere is a common connection. Um, but hopefully I shouldn't need this. Um, but it does, again, tell you what they are in terms of the signal that's going down them. So that uh, would be uh, quite useful, uh, even more so if I could read it. Um, but it's still useful information to have but um, in particular these schematics are extremely useful and as I said I'm uh, fairly surprised that these even exist let alone that um, someone was able and uh, willing to send them to me so again thanks very much appreciated so the next um, step of course is going to be starting fault finding proper got all the digits um, lit up uh, there's gonna be a bit of a pause unfortunately in this project at the moment because really the next step is to be able to start probing these boards now unfortunately the um, conformal coating is going to make that very difficult it's very you can't attach uh, IC clips for example and uh, trying to probe them is difficult because you've got to kind of uh, poke the probe through the uh, coating and uh, that does make it difficult and also of course we can't get in here to access them so I'm going to have to make up some risers for this I don't have any risers to suit um, this pitch of connector and uh, they use a bit of a, an old pitch it's, it is used um, in various places but it's uh, 3.175 millimeters or 1 8th of an inch and I don't have any connectors or riser boards to suit that so I've ordered some connectors to make some riser boards but I need to design and uh, order some uh, actual 
uh, rise of PCBs. So um, there'll be a bit of a pause while I do that and while I wait for them to be delivered. But having the schematics and um, the uh, data sheets for this is obviously going to make this project uh, far more likely to be successful and uh, hopefully far more interesting for you because we'll be able to look at the circuits as we proceed.